Hello friends! In today's video I want to show you a process of another watercolor portrait that I made recently. I will be using masking fluid and working on a new watercolor paper that I have not tried before and overall I want this to be just a casual chatty video. I have not been feeling great lately and my mental as well as physical ability to complete any task is currently challenged a lot. So let's see if I can make this one interesting for you. You've seen a glimpse of this drawing process in my last studio vlog because I got this watercolor block in February and wanted to try the paper right away. I was so impatient that I finished the drawing literally two hours after unboxing that art supply order, but then it had to sit on my table and wait until I had time to paint it. The paper block is a Winsor Newton professional cotton watercolor paper in cold pressed version and I have to vouch for this paper after only painting a single painting on it because I did everything that a well-behaved watercolor artist dares not to do to a watercolor paper and more. And the painting still came out beautifully in the end, colors and everything didn't even look patchy after all those layers and tons of water and even all that rubbing with my eraser. Yeah, it was a hard test and the paper deserves an A. Let me tell you a bit more about my process. If you are a regular viewer, then you know that I have been frustrated from not seeing much progress in my works. And since the beginning of 2022, I have been trying my best to paint as much as I can and test out different approaches to find my own artistic voice. It's the end of March and after three months of constant work, I already found an approach that I like the most and I sort of started to use it in almost every painting that I start nowadays. That's to start the painting process off from a very loose and blurry underpainting. It unifies the painting and gives it a color structure. In this one I wanted to explore contrast between oranges and blues. My first layers of paint are therefore done into the wet surface and the result is very unpredictable. All I know and can influence in this stage is the color palette and basically a very rough idea of where each color should be placed and how much of each color will be used in this picture. I knew this girl will have an orangey hair and the background will be bluish so I placed the colors roughly there but wet in wet never quite stay where you put it but that's okay do not panic if you want to try something similar and your first layers look chaotic it doesn't mean anything yet because you can then choose which parts of the painting you want to show more and give them a little sharper definition and contrast here in these areas I then continue working with more precision into the dry surface and I keep adding layers of paint to build shadows you can even increase saturation of the color at certain areas by glazing some of the same color on top. What I love about this process is that I can make decisions as I paint and so at the moment I completely fail at thumbnailing my artwork since I never know exactly what it will look like in the end. This approach however can be a little risky and sometimes it just doesn't look what I envisioned but I still rather do the work and fail and then have to do it again than not do the work because doing even a failed work means having to live through what the wrong process feels like. It's a time investment but you'll know from that moment on when you are on the wrong path while painting so it's like internalizing this feeling of like this process is not quite right <laughs> it is very complicated to explain but i just don't see throwing your paper and starting over is such a big deal and especially when working small like i'm right now this paper is only a little over a4 in size and so that wouldn't take a lot of time to remake if anything goes wrong <music> Speaking of making mistakes, my main job is teaching people how to paint with watercolor and I do that every week in my studio. My approach to teaching others has a lot to do with how I teach myself because I'm very lucky that I myself am quite a difficult student. I struggle a lot, I don't pay attention, I make 
each mistake multiple times, but most importantly, no matter how many times I hear don't do this and do that instead, it simply doesn't get through until I make that particular mistake myself a couple of times. And that's why I think failing some of your pieces is really something that you have to do just so you know exactly what it feels like when things aren't working out. And here we go again with the mask and fluid. This one is by Campus and I would compare it to Pebble when it comes to color, consistency and reliability. Since it's more watery than most mask and fluids, it is very easy to apply and it sticks well to the surface, but it's not difficult to remove either. It dries quite quickly and so I didn't have to wait too much to apply another layer of watercolor. For this painting I was using my new My Mary blue paints for the second time and with paper it's easier for me to form an opinion because it shows problems immediately if the material is not what it's supposed to be like but with quality paints it's more difficult for me to spot differences i would spot problems with hobby kind of paint or student grade paint that has unnecessary opacity or if it dries too chalky then i would notice immediately but my mary blue are higher grade paints that are beautifully transparent they mix well and color stays vibrant after drying so noticing differences between them and my favorite and most used Schminky Horadam and Daniel Smith watercolors is harder and will take me more than two artworks so this is not a review yet However, I prefer the paints from the tube and I was sent both tubes and this beautiful pen set by the manufacturer to try out just because I love to go darker in my backgrounds and it's easier to get darker mixes when working with a fresh paint from the tube than getting the amount of pigment from a pen. I will link an unboxing video down below for you so that you can check what I have and swatches of those paints if you're interested to see. I'm so grateful they picked this ultramarine blue paint and paints gray because I used a great deal of them in this painting. In the last stage of the painting process I added highlights with a colored pencil so that they remain a little softer and then try to decide on a metallic watercolor to embellish the background a little. Maybe I should have skipped this step but I felt so good drawing tiny flowers and dots that I kept on going. Sometimes it's hard to stop even though painting will not benefit from any more additions just because it's simply fun in the end. Oh well, <laughs> I still hope that you like the piece. This was a little different type of face, different features than I usually paint, but I have been trying to pick different features on purpose lately and these look just so very interesting to me. I am still doing my best to finish the mask and fluid review for you and publish two videos every week but when my voice disappears suddenly I can't do much else than publish shorts and shorts is a newish, a newish video format that YouTube introduced last year and I've been trying to avoid it because I'm still trying to find a way how to do my best in this regular video format but I decided to give it a try anyway and add a few shorts every week to my regular content. They are essentially shorter than one minute and filmed vertically. So I just wanted to mention these. Some paintings that I do at home where I don't have my camera set up, I now film vertically on my phone and then publish via shorts and also Instagram reels. Feel free to let me know your thoughts on this painting or my process or just let me know how you are feeling this week and I will talk to you again in just a few days. Bye! Thank you.